Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. The new Czechoslovakian vehicles are not the only new thing about the 9.13 test server. There are also some quite substantial changes to your favorite vehicles that are already in the game, such as my most played tank, the M48A1 Patton, the Tier 10 American Medium Tank, which is getting a very significant buff this patch. I'm going to talk through all the changes in this video so you can be up to date with some tanks that we might be seeing a lot more of in patch 9. 13. So firstly, a lot of tier 8 Soviet tanks are having their penetration buffed of their 100mm main armaments. The T-44, the T-54 first prototype, and the Su-100M1 are all getting a penetration buff of 175 to 183mm. And also, if you choose to use the T-44's 100mm gun when you're grinding through the T-54, you'll benefit from the same buff. So why is this? Why are all these 100mm guns being buffed? Well, I think it's to standardize the 100mm cannon that are on Soviet tanks with their Chinese counterparts. A few patches ago, all of the Chinese 100mm guns were buffed to 181mm of penetration, and it just seems that this is a catch-up for the Soviet tanks. And really, this T-54 first prototype is getting into a better and better position. Next up, the Object 430, the Tier 10 Soviet medium tank with the highest DPM of any medium tank in the game, is having a hit point pool buff from 1,900 to 2,000, and also the durability of its internal modules is being increased by 20%, meaning that you're going to be losing your ammo rack less, be set on fire less from your fuel tanks erupting, and generally just a more resilient force on the battlefield, which is a, what I feel the 430 needs to be. I don't really get that feeling of the well-sloped 120mm of frontal armor that the 430 has, which should make it a brawler. The Su-12254 is also getting some love. This Tier 9 Soviet highly mobile tank destroyer is getting a significant buff with its top 120mm gun. Going from firing 6.52 rounds a minute to 6.82 rounds a minute, which is a buff to its DPM of just under 5%. The T10 is also getting a buff, which is the new name for an IS-8. Its traverse speed has been increased, the dispersion while moving the hull has been decreased, which means that you will have less accuracy loss, and also its crossing capacity on all terrains has been increased, which should make it more mobile on every type of terrain, but especially medium terrain. 15% is a rather large buff to the mobility of the T-10 off-road. There are also some buffs to the Tier 8 Soviet heavy tank, the KV-4. It's getting a fantastic aim time buff of half a second, as well as a reload buff by 0.8 of a second, which is a DPM buff of nearly 8%, also having its hit points increased by 50 which all in all means this vehicle should be a lot more competitive. For the Tier 8 Soviet tank destroyer, the Su-101, they are adding the 122mm gun that is usable on the Tier 9 Su-12254. Here we have the Su-101 using the 122mm on the left, and the Su-101 using 100mm on the right. Bigger is not always better, however, when it comes to DPM. You will take a massive DPM hit if you choose to have increased alpha damage on this vehicle, as the 100mm gun has 30% higher DPM than the brand new 122mm. However, it's very hard to use the rate of fire in this tank destroyer, with it being so high at 9.34 rounds a minute. And so you might find that with your increased alpha damage from 320 to 440, that you can actually trade more effectively if you want to with this TD. However, you're going to have nearly a second worst aim time, and you're going to be slightly less accurate. But at least you're going to have a choice about how you move up the tech tree. Now on to US vehicles. There's a buff to the first ever tank that I got over a thousand average experience on, the M26 Pershing. Such a lovely all-rounder at tier 8 medium, which is getting a lovely buff to the penetration of its 90mm gun from 180 to 190. This buff will also help you grind through the M46 pattern if you still have it stock. But if you've got your tier 9 American medium tank elite, you can look forward to better dispersion in patch 913 which has been reduced when you turn the turret by 20%, which is effectively going to reduce the combat aim time on one of the most powerful Tier 9 medium tanks. The Tier 8 American Autoloader will have 181mm of penetration next patch. Also, if you're lucky enough to have the T95E2, the referral reward tank, 
it will get the same buff to its 90mm gun. And next is one of the biggest bits of news, at least for me, in this video. The M48A1 pattern is back, baby. It's been a long time since I felt that this vehicle was competitive, probably patch 7.5. But finally, Wargaming are giving it some love. I could not be happier to get back into my most played vehicle of all time. The aim time of the pattern is being buffed from 2 seconds to 1.9 seconds. And the reload is getting decreased from 8.8 .8 to 8.35. Which means that its rate of fire is going from 6.82 to 7.19 which is a buff of 5% DPM. This is very significant for the M48A1 pattern, as this graph aims to highlight. Along the y-axis, we have a damage per minute, and along the x-axis, we have all of the tier 10 medium tanks. The blue represents the M48A1 in patch 912, with the only readily available vehicles having worse DPM, the AMX-30B and the E50M. And of course the bat chat, but that has an autoloader. Now the M48A1 is going to leapfrog the Leopard, the Centurion Action 10 and the 121 to bridge the gap between the 121 and the Soviet medium tanks in addition to the STB-1. And considering the vehicle is getting that slight aim time buff, as well as 33% decreased dispersion when you turn the turret, well, it's time to ready those engines again, boys. Next are some very interesting changes to some tank destroyers. The T-95 is getting a hit point buff to 1,800, as well as increased durability of its engine. And the T-28, the Tier 8 American tank destroyer, is getting a whopping 350 hit point buff to 1,500. Unfortunately, it looks like Wargaming thought that the T-28 prototype didn't need this love, as its hit points will remain the same, but it still gets that slight engine increase in durability. Now on to German vehicles. The Ferdinand, the tier 8 German tank destroyer, is getting a buff 300 hit points on its health pool, up to 1,500. And in addition, its rate of fire is being slightly increased by 0.3 meaning its rate of fire will go from 5 rounds a minute to 5.13. And so that means that this vehicle is more durable and more dangerous as well. Next, we're seeing further buffs to the Tier 9 German medium tank, the Leopard Prototype, which seems to get buffed every other patch at the moment, and these aren't small buffs to this vehicle. The vehicle will be more accurate when moving and also when turning the tracks. The aiming time has also been buffed by 0.2 seconds, and the vehicle gets a whopping rate of fire buff, going from firing 5.41 rounds a minute to 5.83 rounds a minute. Now, fair enough, this still isn't as much as, for example, the AMX-30 prototype at the moment, or even nearly close to, I believe, the 6.66 rounds a minute that the M46 pattern fires. But it wasn't long ago since the rate of fire of the Leopard was a flat 5 rounds a minute, the same as the Centurion 7-1. And so the vehicle keeps getting tuned higher and higher, and I might have to repurchase one and give it another go. Furthermore, the dispersion when turning the turret is being decreased by 12%, and the traverse speed is being slightly increased by a degree, and it's getting 50 more hit points. Great news for people who still haven't reached the Leopard 1 and need to grind through the Leopard prototype. Next will be very sad news for everyone who loves the Tortoise. The Tiger is now taking the crown as having the most hit points at Tier 9, with an increase from 1,800 to 2,100, 100 more hit points than the Tortoise currently has. Personally for me, however, I'm quite looking forward to getting that 300 hit points of extra snacking if I can manage to get its side armor. But you know your tank is getting very resilient when you can take two hits from a Jagdpanzer E100 at least half the time. The Tiger II is also getting an accuracy buff to both of its 105mm, with the top L68 gun getting increased to 0.31 accuracy. That's some serious German sniping there. Also, the VK3002D is getting a traverse speed buff as well as an increase to its crossing capacity on all terrains. So that vehicle will be more mobile in patch 913. Now, Viva la France! Let's take a look to see what is happening to the French vehicles. The ARL V39 is getting a massive aim time buff to its 90mm gun as well as increased crossing capacity on all terrains, making it more mobile. Also, the AMX M4 is getting a buff to its hit points from 1,200 to 1,350, which means that this vehicle leapfrogs the T29 and ends up with 100 more hit points than it, so it's going to be a little bit more resilient. Also, French autoloaders are getting a buff, the Tier 6 AMX 
12T will have less dispersion on the move and increased crossing capacity on solid and medium terrain and decreased dispersion when turning the turret. So all in all, your AMX 12T is going to be more mobile and more accurate faster. The AMX 1375 is getting a buff. The traverse speed is being increased by 2 degrees and the dispersion decreased by 10 degrees when you're both moving and also turning the hull. And furthermore, when turning the turret, you're also going to have less dispersion by 12%. The Lorraine 40T, the tier 9 French medium tank, is also getting some love, with an aim time buff from 3 seconds to 2.5 seconds on its top 100mm gun, which makes this vehicle rather ferocious, as the aim time was one of the limiting factors on this vehicle. And before everybody gets excited, the Batchat is not getting a buff, apart from to its stock guns, the 90mm and the 100mm. Next, let's see what's happening to Chinese vehicles. The 113 is both getting buffed and also nerfed, the first vehicle in this video to do so. The dispersion when both traveling and also turning the hull will be decreased by 5% on the 113, which should make this vehicle more accurate faster while in motion. Also, the crossing capacity of the 113 has been massively increased by 15% on solid terrain and 14% on medium terrain, making this vehicle much more mobile, both on road and off it. However, now onto the nerfs. The aiming time has been increased from 2.7 seconds to 2.8 seconds, and the accuracy of the tank has been decreased from 0.36 to 0.37. However, these two are very minor nerfs when we take into account that the rate of fire has been buffed from 5.5 rounds a minute to a flat 6 rounds a minute. This is a whopping 9% buff to the DPM of the 113, which means that the 113 changes from effectively having the same DPM as a T110E5 to having significantly better DPM than it just falling short of the FV215B. And considering the alpha damage of this vehicle, which often allows you to out-trade your opponents, combined with that increased mobility, while your 113 might be just a touch less accurate, it's going to be far more brutal. And also, one of the best things happening to the tank is that it's getting a gun depression increase from 4 degrees to 5 degrees, which still doesn't quite equal the IS-7, but it does equal the Object 260, which has 5 degrees, which is the same as a plethora of other Soviet medium tanks such as the T-62A and the T-54. So overall, this is a significant buff to the Tier 10 Chinese heavy tank, a vehicle which really did need some love. Next up, the Tier 10 Chinese medium tank, the 121, is also getting a buff. Its crossing capacity is being increased on all terrains, and the dispersion on turret traverse is being decreased by 14%, and is getting a tiny gun depression buff of 0.5 degrees, giving this tank a total gun depression of a rather awkward still 3.5 degrees. Nevertheless, this will still be great news to top tier Chinese tank drivers. Next up, the top tier Chinese light tank, the WZ-132, one of my favorite vehicles, is getting a dramatic rate of fire increase of 0.6 but only if you choose to use the 100mm gun and not the 85mm gun on this tank. The rate of fire is increasing from 7.6 to 8.2, which effectively means that the DPM of this tank leapfrogs most tier 8 medium tanks, with an overall DPM buff of over 8%. Next, its predecessor, the WZ-131, is getting a buff as well, with its crossing capacity increased only on soft terrain by 7%, but it is getting an aim time buff with the 100mm gun available on that vehicle from 2.7 to 2.6 and also a rate of fire buff from 8.7 to 8.3. But those who prefer to use the 85mm on that tank, you're also getting a little buff of 17% dispersion on turret traverse. Next up is one of my favorite tier 9 heavy tanks in the game, the WZ-111 Model 1-4, which is getting a buff to its dispersion when moving and also when turning its hull by 14%, which should make this vehicle more accurate when on the move. Next up, the T-34-2 is getting a buff to the aim time of both its 100mm from 2.9 to 2.8 and of its 122mm from 3.4 to 3.1. And oh my word, it's getting a gun depression angle buff from 3 degrees to 5 degrees, and look no further than this as well. The T-34-3, one of my most hated tier 8 premium tanks, is getting a buff in gun depression of 2 degrees from 3 to 5. That is simply dramatic, as I can show you here. This is what 3 degrees of gun depression looks like, and this is what 5 degrees of gun depression looks like. 
This should enable the T-34-3 to use far more ridge lines to find locations that it can go hull down, and will frankly make this vehicle far more competitive than it was before. Does it make this tank better than the T-54 first prototype? Well, I, I still don't think so, but at least there might be a reason for some of you who have this in your garage to get out and kick some butt, and if you previously loved this tank, this is going to be a huge buff in the convenience of playing this vehicle. And so, finally, Japanese tank lovers, you're going to be so thrilled with all the buffs to all of the Japanese tanks in the game. Uh, well, maybe not, as only the Chiri is getting buff. And it's the durability of its internal modules by 15%. But then again, at least you get something right, unlike the Brits, which got absolutely nothing. And considering this whole gigantic series of buffs to a lot of vehicles in the game, very surprising that a few of the British tanks didn't get anything as well. Nevertheless, I would probably prefer no changes rather than to have a buff to the Chiri. And so that pretty much covers all of the changes, guys. This was one of the most extensive series of buffs that I've seen to vehicles in a long time from Wargaming. And all in all, I think they've picked out vehicles that pretty much did need some love. And so great job for that. And I can't wait to start playing the M48A1 a hell of a lot more. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, or maybe it was just useful to you. If it was, please do give it a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about these changes. Do you think any of the tanks have been overbuffed? Do you think any of the tanks needed love that didn't get any? Let me know what you guys think. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.